thanks for having me tonight. Uh, my name is Yuri Zaremba. I'm a senior d uh, user experience designer at Amazon. Um, hard to believe, but I've been there for about six years now, uh, out of my 10-year uh, design career at this point. I've worked on things you may have uh, played around with, like uh, the Echo line of products, uh, the Kindle e-reader, and uh, several retail experiences. But um, it's amazing to be here, and thank you for, for having me. Um, so uh, some, uh, real uh, quick question to the crowd um, before I get started. Uh, how, how many people here like are already kind of in the workforce or are working for somebody or have like some design experience? Yeah, cool. So like a quarter of the class. Um, so uh, one of the one of the things that uh, that I ran into early on, um, especially when I transitioned from uh, from marketing and advertising into uh, working on product, is a lot of the time uh, you paint an amazing vision uh, of of uh, of a product when you first start on that product. And then, w as soon as uh, you start working with your engineers, it gets squashed. You get uh, you get discouraged, and there's maybe 25% of what you're what you originally wanted to do that ships. Um, so that that's an introduction to what to expect in your UX career. With that said, though, um, I want to talk about how to paint a vision for your team. So uh, as, as you kind of develop your, uh, your own personal repertoires and your UX practices, it may or may not start to look something like this, meaning really complicated with a ton of different tools that you use depending on, on the project. Um, but instead of talking about UX process, I kind of wanted to broach a different subject today, and that's what are you doing to make sure that your organization or startup or wherever you end up actually applying uh, your uh, design expertise towards, um, what are you doing to make sure that it, that it's going in the right direction four or five years from now? Um, especially earlier in my career, I was always tempting to try to squeeze everything I could out of every project that uh, that landed on my lap because I was trying to get it into my portfolio, um, and sometimes. That could be to the detriment of the actual project because you're being distracted by trying to make the little that you can shiny, as opposed to having a long, like a longer, uh, a longer, like um, I guess, roadway to give yourself to think about it. So, how how does product design change for you if you think about it as a four-year project, as opposed to something that's going to ship in six months, which usually becomes two years, but. Uh, but like, how how does that that change? Like, how you look at at whatever product you're looking at, what you're working on. Well, let me tell you how it affected a, a project that I was working on. So, uh, you guys might have heard of Amazon Alexa. So it's uh, and um, uh, specifically, it's you know the Amazon's assistant that'll come out of the box with any Echo product that you buy. Well, um, I worked I worked on. Uh, I worked on the smart home experience of, of Alexa um, for about three years. And when I first uh, came to the team, um, the entire experience on the smart home side looked something like this. It was just a bunch of lists, and it was all in HTML and JavaScript. So, uh, but in my head, you know, it didn't, it didn't take long um, to both myself and find fellow colleagues that also felt strongly that you know, Alexa should feel something like this. Like, it should feel sexier. It should feel integrated. Smart home stuff should talk to music stuff. And, uh, you know, there should be ways to control your lights straight from the app. Yada, yada, yada. But, but uh, the thing that, I mean, I probably spend, I, I got to spin my wheels for over a year working on design exercises and concepts until finally... A moment came where uh, I, w I was asked to, to drive the design for a product called uh, Echo Plus, which is our Echo speaker that comes with a smart home radio built inside. So I got to work on the V1 version of that product. So now I got to take all that stuff that I had in my head and I got a bunch of people exci excited about across four different teams, and I, and I can now execute on, on that original vision, right? Well, not exactly. So... 
through through several several d design iterations and once once engineers got got looped in i mean again about a quarter of the original vision is actually what would be executable uh, executable you know within that first release cycle that took us you know about about a year or so but either way because myself and you know colleagues across several other teams had an idea of how this thing would evolve we said okay that's fine how can we make sure that whatever we build today will scale in the directions that we want the direction that we want to take it so that that ha that immediately got us thinking about like okay well we got to start splitting up the experience into section uh any control experiences need to be completely mo uh, completely modular so that we can iterate that on them you know post launch of this product and any kind of settings needs to be uh needs to also not mix into uh into the control interface so the finished product ended up lo looking something like this so it was about halfway towards what we wanted to do. For the first time, uh, Amazon devi uh, uh, Echo devices were getting mixed into your uh, smart home devices, but most of all, you're able to click on a light bulb and actually control it from either your phone or an, or, or an Echo device, but there was complete parity between the two. And over time, that original vision in a wireframe format is actually more or less what ended up getting executed on. We ended up moving away from uh, from you know fo overly focusing on devices and starting to think about the rooms that those devices were in, and music was now it was now uh, uh, was now overlapping with smart home, and we had a really uh, really a unique uh, experience that was uh, pretty specific to us. But if I would have just if I would have gotten overly frustrated in 2015, I would have just bounced, and you know someone else would have uh, would have come in and the product might have ended up looking a little bit different. But um, because I stuck around, I, I get to, uh, you know, in retrospect, th this exercise was really fun to do because it's crazy that, you know, year over year, the product completely evolved because there were a vi was a, vi a vision in the beginning and because there were multiple teams that were behind that vision, and that's super key. So my question to you and the question that I that I ask that you ask yourselves as you kind of go into the workforce and you know for those of you that are already designing you know as you uh, as you get more projects or even on your current project is uh, ask yourself how do not just you but we paint a vision for your product we being whatever your extended team is so that doesn't mean just your fellow designers on the same exact team that means like what what parallel teams at your company can you connect connect with and and get a part of the process to to stretch it as far as you freaking can so like uh you know even if you're if you're executive or whatever your startup owner uh you know can't see past next year like what people at your company uh can can you talk to that'll get you as many ideas as possible to pack into a vision that you can then evangelize across not just you know your own leadership for a promotion that's not the point the point is to get people excited about what you're working on most of all you'll be a lot more excited so how do how do you create a vision well i think that over time you'll find that only you can answer that question as you kind of integrate it into your own design process. But the short answer to that is your vision is separate from whatever you're immediately working on. Uh, and it's also not something that you should, ch uh, that you should chew too much time out of your, uh, out of your like already, you know, whatever hectic schedule as you're preparing to, you know, ship whatever next feature it is that you're working on, but it should be a collaborative effort that you always have going on in the background and is like ever changing. So, first of all, include others in that process, as, as I mentioned. The point of a vision isn't to get a promotion. Uh, share ownership of it. The moment that you share ownership and let others uh, experience what it means um, to drive change in the organization is the day that you become a real leader. It's not when you get a higher title. Um, next is uh, consider the pain points that you identify in your customer journey. So if, you, if, uh, if I can assume that you have a, a planning phase in your design process, you probably have some point where you map out an overall uh, customer journey and you identify the pain points. Make sure whatever that vision is, is really focused on those pain points. Otherwise, there's no point in doing a customer journey in the first place. 
Next is if you if you do have executive partners or partner teams or whatever, try to f try to find whatever people you can that can get you thinking as far possible uh, as far as possible, and then don't distract people with it. Just think about it and and work on it in your spare time. Um, the vision that you're working on shouldn't be something that that you just do, you know, because you have free time one month and then you shelve for for a year and then you come back to the, your vision should be something that you're thinking about um, with every sprint and with every feature release and it should evolve over time and lastly don't don't turn your vision into a bible it's just a tool so the same way that that you know a customer journey is a tool or a wireframe is a tool or a prototype tool a vision is just a tool that you use to get people to take a step back and think about okay but what do we eventually want to get to And just a quick, quick quote as I kind of started to touch on leadership. Leadership is not about titles, positions, or flowcharts. It's about one life influencing another. And when you paint a vision and you include others in that process, you influence others. Thank you.